Syracuse National Letter of Intent Signing Day Special. I'm Matt Park. At this time, we're joined by Syracuse head coach Dino Babers, who joins us from our hot studio across campus. And uh, coach, congratulations. Uh, another milestone for you to uh, complete what is uh, your highest rated recruiting class so far. Matt, thanks a lot. I thought that the assistant coaches did a fabulous job and you know, we were all working very hard. This was our first opportunity with a double signing date and uh, a lot of the recruiting stuff, especially in December, was on the back end of the football season. But to be able to com uh, combine those two things and still come out with the type of class we came out with, we're really excited about it. You have been very vocal in your support of the early signing day and its impact for programs like Syracuse and how you think it'll help. So you did the bulk of your work really before Christmas and now you could be selective. How did you approach this period and what remarks do you have on the three players signed today? Well, first of all, we, we think the entire class is a very good class. I don't want to make individual uh, remarks on any individual player if I can help that. This has been a team effort and when they come join the team, we'll see how they're going to do. But we thought that uh, by getting those running backs at the end, getting a defensive lineman that was really needed in the class, I thought that was fantastic. And then just to, to take the last month of January and not only finish out the 2018 class, the last one third part of the, of the 2018 class, but to also jumpstart 2019 and 2020. Uh, and, and to get out there and shake some hands and meet some coaches. I had a, had, I got an opportunity to go to New Jersey and meet a lot of coaches out in New Jersey. The DNV uh, ran up the eastern coast of uh, Florida, uh, Detroit. I got to, got to meet a lot of coaches on their home turf, so to speak, and to get around more so than I've been able to get around the first two years. So I was really excited about getting out there and just talking about our program and, and letting them know the things that we're trying to do here in Syracuse, New York, and how some of the young men that they have uh, might be able to help us. If you look at the geographical distribution of this class, are you pleased with what appears to be a mix of Syracuse's traditional recruiting hotbeds, New York, New Jersey, D.C., and then really some areas where you and your staff have laid down roots like uh, Texas and Detroit? You know, we always want to start in the Northeast, and I thought that by getting, if we're going to be strong, we have to be as strong in the Northeast. That's the only way we can be a beast, and we are going to continue to always treat those areas with the, uh, as our primary areas, the, the New York, New Jersey, uh, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, uh, Detroit. And, uh, you know, I'm disappointed that we didn't get anybody from Canada this year. I'm, as soon as I get done with this TV show, we have our, our first recruiting meeting for 2019. I have to go get after some of those coaches. I mean, we've got to get back into Canada. Uh, we got two young men from there in the, in the class before, and we don't want to give that region up either. You know, you talk about it never rests, right? You're right back into it in terms of 2019 and 2020. Since you brought it up, why Canada? Do you feel like that's a, an open frontier for Syracuse? I really do, and I think that that's, that's our backyard, so to speak, even in a geographic form. But when you think about it, I mean, most of, most of the major cities that we can get to, they're as close to, those cities are as close to us as Baltimore is to us. And uh, we need to be able to recruit that region, and a lot of schools don't go there, and our name is known there for a, uh, for a number of things, and we have to treat it as such. I think it's a good area. I really do. Sure. You look at uh, Toronto and Montreal have been uh, very good for a lot of the other programs uh, here on campus, uh, both less than a, a five-hour drive away. Coach, you identified going into your whole recruiting philosophy, let alone this year now that you and your staff are getting a little more uh, your feet underneath you here, to get bigger and longer. Uh, we see in this class a couple – offensive tackles that are 6'7", 320. We see six foot two wide receivers. Do, how do you evaluate the job you did and your staff did in that regard? I think they did a great job. We, there's no doubt in the ACC, and especially, I've said this a thousand times, the ACC Atlantic, if you're going to be successful, you're going to have to have size. And if, if you're not getting size, you better get length. And those are the things that are really lacking when I first got here. When you looked around, our team would play hard and we had as much fight as anybody. But when you started looking at our dogs compared to their dogs, we looked like Chihuahuas and they looked like Great Danes. And I'm, we don't have to all have Great Danes, but we at least get to the German Shepherd size of, of some of these things. So we have an opportunity to not only block some of these people, but tackle them as well. Seems like you uh, were able to take care of your checklist, not only bigger and longer, 
but in terms of representing the, the state of New York. I know that was something that was a goal for you, maybe not to force it if the players weren't there, but you bring in four New York State players, Kadir White, big offensive lineman from the Bronx, Trill Williams uh, from Yonkers, an outstandingly athletic uh, defensive back, Gabe Harans, the local kid from Baldwinsville High School as the tight end, and then Andre Sisco, he played at IMG, but originally uh, from New York. Is that on par with what you hope to be the case for your recruiting classes going forward? Absolutely, man, absolutely. I really, what we want, and I've said this, what we want is we want young men from the state of New York in the dome playing on the football field where their moms, their dads, their aunts, their uncles, their high school teachers can come and support them in the dome and we can get that thing, get that loud house filled up and rocking and rolling. And I think it's, to me, it's a little bit of a misservice if you recruit someone and you really don't think that that person's ever gonna be able to play for you. Just to say that you've got someone, a local guy uh, from the state, I, it, it, it just irks me the wrong way. So these young men that we went after, we feel like they have upside. We feel like they have an opportunity to get on that football field and help us win football games in the ACC Atlantic, which is gonna give us representation in this state so people turn on their t TVs and they're looking at Syracuse, they're gonna be able to see young men from the state of New York playing for their local university. Coach, let's switch gears here a little bit while we have you with uh, spring football about to get going. You also have reshaped your coaching staff. New legislation allows for a 10th assistant coach. You have added uh, Mike Cavanaugh, most uh, recently the offensive line coach at Nebraska, and then Kirk Martin, who uh, you have a personal connection with, but also an outstanding high school football coach from Manville, Texas. He comes in. What do they provide? Well, first of all, when you talk about uh, Cavanaugh, you're talking about someone that's had so many years of Power Five Division One experience, it's ridiculous. And he's always been able to do more with less. And that's the thing that's really excited, excited me about him, is when you start researching what his offensive lines could do. Uh, when he was at Oregon State, I believe twice they upset USC when they were ranked number one, one time rushing for mucho yards against uh, the Trojans. And they're do he's doing it with Oregon State football players and that's not to put down that university but there's a big difference between Oregon State and USC and not only does he do it, does it once he does it twice when you look at his background with his NFL background he has an he also has an in-law that uh, uh, that was in the NFL was an offensive coordinator in the NFL for a long period of time he has so much knowledge he's got an encyclopedia of knowledge and he's got a, a tough attitude that we want to get going uh, with that offensive line to get our run game going in the ACC. And I think he was a fantastic hire, and uh, I think he's going to be someone that's going to be with us for a long period of time. Kirk Martin is going to be uh, working with our quarterbacks. Uh, I talked about this a little bit earlier in the press conference. Some people said, why him? Our quarterback position is really unique, and the first thing we start with is we want to get a man of fantastic cloth, some, somebody with great character. And we're a little bit different on offense than a lot of people, so we need to teach that person uh, the ins and outs of our offense. So it's not so much about how much knowledge you walk in the door with, but how much, how, what's your attitude about learning new things because we're gonna put some new things on him that he's never seen before. And the very first time I ever hired for that position, I hired an offensive coordinator out of Temple High School in Texas. He had never been a Division I coach at all and he worked with us for three years, and then after three years, he was the offensive coordinator at the University of Texas. The next young man that we moved to that position who was with us three years, uh, six years before he got here, was just a graduate assistant, and he had never played quarterback in college football. So we have the ability to take really, really fine men in that position if they have fantastic cloth, which Kirk does, and mold them into the, the type of quarterback coach that we want. Now, all that being said, Kirk, is a fantastic coach he is his accolades speaks for themselves and and what we're getting instead of getting a piece of coal with maybe the two other young men we're getting a diamond and uh, we think with him coming in and with that attitude that i talked about and and allowing us to teach him what we do in our offense with our quarterbacks i think we may have a quarterback coach that's not only is going to stay with us a long time that's going to be able to really really help this program in the future well, this uh, offense does have its roots in uh, Texas, as has been well chronicled. So uh, we thank you for your time today, Coach. And I know you've got a meeting to run to. Uh, recruiting never stops. And best of luck on 2019. Matt, thank you so much.